This morning's Coffee With is with Dr. Dan Riskin. And the satellite interview is furnished by the Science Channel. Dr. Dan Riskin, welcome to WJZ. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm looking over your shoulder just on a comment. <laughs> I prefer to say the, a beautiful ending to a tremendous space adventure. How do you see it? Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. I mean, death has a lot of different meanings to different people, but we sort of thought it really drove home the permanency of this. Um, this mission has been 12 years uh, since it launched, never mind the planning stages before that. For a lot of these scientists, they've been working on this 25 years, their whole careers, and uh, this is going to be the end point. So this, this mission, hugely ambitious to try to catch a comet, uh, arguably one of the most charismatic things in our solar system, to launch from Earth, to pick a comet, try to catch it, fly for 10 years through space on this crazy trajectory to get there, then finally to catch up, speed up behind it, then slam on the brakes to sort of meet it and follow with it, go into orbit around it. At one point, the mission uh, sent a lander down to the surface, but the comet killed the lander, so that was fun. And then uh, this mission has just been taking pictures and taking measurements of this comet as the comet has approached the sun, gone around the sun, and now as it leaves the sun, as it's, you know, and through that formed a tail and then had the tail disappear. And now, as the comet moves away from the sun, uh, this solar-powered spacecraft is going to run out of juice. And so rather than just let the mission, you know, end on a low note with it sort of just running out of juice, they decided that what they would do is crash the spacecraft into the surface of the comet, get close-up pictures and close-up measurements all the way down to touchdown, and then once it hits, turns off and shuts off forever and sits on that surface of that comet for millions of years to be discovered by some alien race down the road. Wow. The, the feel it came to life, the, the, the washing machine sized lander, as it was always described, what about three, four weeks ago, all of a sudden some light hit its solar cells and bang, there it was. Yeah, so, so Philae's story is really interesting. It, it was a lander that they designed to land on the surface, and the plan was that it would be on the surface talking to the orbiter for the entirety of the mission. Um, but unfortunately, it did not stick the landing. They sent it down to the surface. It landed right where it was supposed to land, but the grappling hooks that were supposed to hold it into place didn't fire, so it bounced. And it flew for seven hours through space and then came back down to another part of the comet, and then it bounced again. And then it kind of got wedged in a crevasse, and they knew where it was, but but um, they couldn't get it to, to work. So it, it worked for about three days there, and then it, its batteries died. Then uh, about a year later, it came back online, as you mentioned, for a couple days and sent some more data. And they, they were all excited and thought this might be the beginning, a new beginning. But then it died again, and it's never come back on. What happened about a month ago, though, is that they did find where it's sitting. So they finally got the orbiter to get a picture of this thing on the surface so they could figure out what its orientation is. And that's going to help them know, you know, for all the measurements that this thing took, they didn't know where it was. Now that they know where it was, they know what they were measuring. And so all of those data that came from the lander, they can now put into a context. I just love all these fun facts. Comets smell like rotten eggs and marzipan. That's <laughs> not what I, I don't know what I thought, but that wasn't it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we knew that comets were dirty snowballs, but it's the it's the trace chemicals that are in there and, and what they are that it's interesting from like, a, hey, that's what a comet's made out of perspective, but it's it's far bigger than that because comets are relics from the early solar system. They've been around longer than the sun and our planet. And so if you can break open a comet and see what it's made of, if you can smell the gases coming off of it and you're smelling sulfur compounds that smell like rotten eggs, uh, you know what was in the solar system them before we ever got there. And so, you know, one of the big questions has been about water. Does the water on Earth come from a comet? And by looking very carefully at the water that's in this comet and the water on Earth, they've been able to rule that out. They don't think that the water on our planet came from a comet like this one, if from a comet at all. But the really exciting thing is they did also find amino acids on this comet. And amino acids are the things that you eat in your cereal. I mean, that you, amino acids are part of life. They're part of protein. And so to know that they existed in the solar system before there was ever life, um, that's kind of crazy. That's, uh, that sort of says something about the building blocks of life that were already in place before life ever evolved. And, uh, it, you know, it, ultimately it's, it's figuring out where we come from. Where can we watch this happen? So you want to tune in to uh, the Science Channel at 10 p.m. Eastern uh, and on Friday, September 30th. It's called Death on a Comet, and uh, it's going to tell the whole story from launch, 
uh, through the ups and downs of this journey, the Philae lander, of course, and, and ultimately what we know now that we didn't know before. Dr. Dan, thanks for being with us. Our time is our, our satellite time has run short. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much for talking to me. Thank Pleasure's you. Mine. Here it is.